The first seal opened, and out came a brave rider with a crown on a white horse. This signifies spreading the gospel or the victory of Christ. It can even mean the Antichrist. Once upon a time, in a faraway land, there was a wise man named John. He loved God and spent his days teaching others about his love and kindness. One day, while John was praying on the beautiful island of Patmos, God showed him amazing things that were going to happen in the future. God gave John a special scroll with seven seals. Each seal had something important to show and represent about what would happen in the world. The first seal opened, and out came a brave rider with a crown on a white horse. This signifies spreading the gospel or the victory of Christ. It can even mean the Antichrist. The second seal opened, and a fiery red horse appeared with a rider holding a big sword. This seal represents conflict and violence spreading throughout the world. The third seal opened, and a dark black horse trotted out. Its rider had a scale. He said, There will be not enough food, and there will be famine in the land. The fourth seal opened, and a pale horse rode out with death following. Death will come, the voice said softly. This can be through famine, war, or even disease. The fifth seal opened, and beneath an altar, John saw the souls of people who loved God crying out for justice. The sixth seal opened, and there was a great earthquake. The sun turned black, the moon turned red, and stars fell from the sky. The seventh seal opened, and there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. Then seven angels with seven trumpets appeared. They represented God's wrath and further judgment on the earth. John shared these visions to remind everyone that God sees everything and is in control, even when things seem scary or uncertain. But there will come a day when the sun will shine again and all God's children will be with him. Don't be afraid. It's me, Jesus. Once upon a time, in a land filled with dusty roads and shimmering seas, there lived a man named Jesus. He was a kind and wise teacher who traveled from town to town, sharing stories that warmed people's hearts. One day, after Jesus had fed thousands of people with just a few loaves of bread and fish, he told his disciples to get into a boat and go to the other side of the sea. Jesus wanted some time alone to pray, so he went up on a hill to pray. The disciples obeyed Jesus and sailed away. But soon, a big storm came, and the wind and the waves made the boat rock back and forth. The disciples were scared and wondered if they would make it to the shore. Meanwhile, Jesus finished praying and saw that his friends were in trouble. He decided to help them, but he did not need a boat. He just walked on the water as if it were solid ground. In the middle of the night, when the storm was at its fiercest, the disciples saw something incredible. A figure like a ghost was walking towards them on the water. They were terrified, but Jesus called out, Don't be afraid. It's me, Jesus. Peter, one of Jesus' closest disciples, was amazed. He wanted to walk on the water too. He said to Jesus, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come to you on the water. Jesus smiled and said, Come. Filled with faith, Peter stepped out of the boat and miraculously walked on the water toward Jesus. But as soon as he took his eyes off Jesus and looked at the raging waves, fear crept in and he began to sink. Ah! Lord, save me! Without hesitation, Jesus reached out his hand and caught Peter. He said, You of little faith, why did you doubt? Together, they walked back to the boat, and as soon as they stepped in, the wind stopped and the sea became calm. The disciples, amazed and grateful, worshipped Jesus, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. Hooray for Jesus! Hope you enjoyed. See you in the next story. Imagine a garden. Not just any garden, but the most beautiful place you can dream of. Lush trees bursting with juicy fruit, sparkling rivers winding through meadows, and flowers blooming in every color imaginable. This was the Garden of Eden, and in it lived the very first people ever, Adam and Eve. Hello! God had molded Adam from the earth and breathed life into him. 
Then, from one of Adam's ribs, he created Eve, his perfect companion. They lived in perfect harmony, surrounded by God's love and care. They could eat from any tree in the garden, except one, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God told them, if you eat from that tree, you will surely die. One day, while exploring the garden, Eve met a sneaky serpent. Now this wasn't just any snake, it was the devil in disguise. The serpent slithered up and whispered tempting words to Eve. That fruit looks delicious. Why wouldn't God want you to have it? He must be keeping something good from you. Eve, curious and a little bit hungry, listened to the serpent's lies. She took a bite of the forbidden fruit, and it was even tastier oh, than she imagined. Yummy. Then, she shared it with Adam. Suddenly, everything changed. Shame filled them, and they realized they were naked for the first time. They hid from God, feeling guilty and scared. When God called out to them, Adam admitted what they had done. God was disappointed, but his love was still stronger than their mistake. He sent them out of the Garden of Eden, where life would be harder, but they could still choose to follow him. Though they faced challenges, Adam and Eve started a family, and their descendants filled the world. The story of Adam and Eve reminds us that everyone makes mistakes, even the first people ever. But it also shows us that God's love is always there, even when we mess up. Hope you enjoyed. See you in the next story. In ancient Babylon, a bustling city full of towering ziggurats, bustling marketplaces, and bustling crowds, lived a young man named Daniel. Daniel wasn't just any ordinary young man. He was a Hebrew, someone who followed the one true God and possessed a kind heart and a brilliant mind. The king of Babylon, Darius, recognized Daniel's special talents and appointed him as one of his wise advisors. Just look at this. Daniel, with his neatly trimmed beard and flowing robes, sitting amongst the king's other advisors, all dressed in their finest. They would discuss important matters of state, from managing the kingdom's treasury to interpreting mysterious dreams. Daniel, with his wisdom and God-given insights, always offered invaluable advice that earned him the king's respect and trust. However, some of the king's other advisors were jealous of Daniel, and one day, things took a dramatic turn. Those jealous rivals, envious of Daniel's favor with the king, hatched a cunning plan to get him into trouble. They tricked the king into making a strange law. For 30 days, everyone had to pray only to him, the king, and anyone who disobeyed would be thrown into a fearsome lion's den. But Daniel, ever faithful to his God, couldn't bring himself to disobey. Three times a day, he opened his windows facing Jerusalem, the holy city, and prayed aloud, thanking God for his blessings. The jealous rivals, seeing their chance, rushed to the king and cried, Your Majesty, Daniel is breaking your law. The king, although troubled, was bound by his own decree. With a heavy heart, he ordered Daniel to be thrown into the lion's den. May your God, whom you serve, continually rescue you, the king uttered. Now, imagine the suspense. Daniel, alone in the darkness of the den, surrounded by the growls of hungry lions. But Daniel wasn't afraid. He closed his eyes and prayed to God, his faith stronger than ever. And what do you know? God, in his infinite power, protected Daniel. A luminescent light filled the den, and before him stood a glorious being, wings shimmering like sunlit rainbows. Fear not, Daniel. God has heard your prayers and sent me to shield you. Daniel, though surrounded by slumbering lions, felt a surge of hope. But Angel, their teeth still gleam, their muscles tensed. The angel smiled, a radiance that calmed the very air. Their hunger has turned to slumber. God's protection is a mighty fortress. No fang can pierce it. And indeed, the lions, once ferocious, nuzzled against Daniel's feet, purring like contented cats. His fear melted away, replaced by an awe-inspiring calm. He spent the night bathed in divine light, conversing with the angel about faith and God's unwavering love. When the first rays of dawn kissed the den, the angel vanished, leaving behind a whispered promise. God is with you, Daniel, always. And when the king's anxious voice called out, Daniel's cheerful reply echoed through the den, carrying a testament to the power of faith and the angel's silent protection. Long live the king. 
my God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouths so that they would not hurt me because I am innocent before him. I haven't wronged you, your majesty. King Darius was overjoyed to see Daniel unharmed. He ordered Daniel to be lifted out of the den, and then he punished the jealous officials who had plotted against him. Thanks for watching. See you in the next story. Once upon a time, a long, long time ago, there was a special man named Jesus. He was not just any man, but the Son of God. He was sent to teach us about love and kindness. While on earth he healed the sick, calmed the sea, and turned water into wine. Jesus had some friends called disciples who followed him everywhere to learn from him. And in the time of Passover, Jesus and his disciples went to Jerusalem to celebrate this Jewish festival. During this time, Jesus and his disciples gathered for one final meal together because he knew it was almost time for him to leave the earth. Jesus stood up with a jar of water and then began to wash his disciples' feet with the water. Now, in those days, people used to walk dusty roads and their feet would get very dirty. But washing feet was a job usually done by servants, not by someone as important as Jesus. The disciples were confused. They wondered why their teacher was doing something so humble. But Jesus smiled and said, I am showing you how to love and serve one another. Just as I am washing your feet, you should also serve and care for each other. Peter, one of the disciples, felt uneasy and said, No, Lord, you shouldn't wash my feet. But Jesus explained that it was important for them to understand the lesson of humility and serving others. As Jesus washed their feet, he showed them that being great means being humble and helping others. He wanted them to remember this lesson and follow it in their lives. So the disciples learned not just from Jesus' words, but also from his actions. Jesus wanted them to love and care for each other, just as he loved and cared for them. And that's the story of Jesus washing his disciples' feet, a story of love, humility, and the importance of serving one another. Hope you enjoyed. See you in the next story. Queen Esther is a central figure in the biblical book of Esther. The story unfolds in the Persian Empire where King Xerxes, Ahasuerus, holds a grand beauty contest to choose a new queen after dismissing Queen Vashti. Esther, a Jewish orphan raised by her cousin Mordecai, enters the competition and wins the favor of the king. However, Esther conceals her Jewish identity as advised by Mordecai. Meanwhile, Haman, a high-ranking official, plots to annihilate the Jewish people. Learning of the threat, Mordecai urges Esther to reveal her heritage to the king and intercede on behalf of her people. Despite the potential danger, Esther courageously approaches the king, revealing her Jewish background and pleading for the lives of her people. The king, moved by Esther's appeal, reverses Harman's decree, and the Jewish people are saved. Esther's story is celebrated in the Jewish festival of Purim, commemorating the deliverance of the Jewish community from the threat of genocide. The book of Esther emphasizes themes of courage, faith, and the providence of God, showcasing how an ordinary young woman became an instrument of deliverance for her people in a time of crisis. Thanks for watching and see you in the next story.